All right, it is five minutes after the hour, so we are going to go ahead and get started. Looks like most everyone uh, has been able to, to get connected through Zoom. Uh, so we'll get rolling with things here uh, so we can be on time and uh, and get through everything we have to cover tonight, which is a lot. Uh, so hopefully you're here for the inductions launch event. Uh, that's that's what's happening tonight. A few housekeeping uh, items before we get started. Uh, the webinar this evening is scheduled for uh, 90 minutes. Uh, we will break that up into, we have some slides, we're gonna hop into some demos, we'll take some questions. Uh, then we have a few more things to, to show on a demo um, and some, to some final project updates that we're gonna cover. Uh, and then we'll be around for question and answers at the end. Uh, we may get done early, uh, but if we you know, are still taking questions and doing demos, uh, we will, will stop uh, at the 90 minute mark uh, that we had scheduled, but we will for sure get through all the demos and the slides uh, and the client project updates uh, that we want to present tonight. But tentatively, we're shooting for about 90 minutes. Everyone is muted uh, on our Zoom webinar platform. If you have questions, please submit them through the Q&A feature of Zoom. Uh, if you're on a desktop or tablet, there'll be a uh, dark gray bar that has a Q&A button. Uh, please use that to submit your features. The chat has been disabled this evening. Uh, the Q&A just allows and ensures that uh, the moderation team is able to, to filter through the questions and make sure that we're able to get to them all. In the event that we run out of time, we're not able to get to the questions we will uh, answer those via a follow-up email, but we will do our best uh, to get through them. Uh, you will need to, uh, as I said, all participants are muted. You will need to, to join um, via phone or PC audio. We're not able to unmute you, so if you have questions, I do see some hands going up in the Zoom in the webinar. Uh, you'll need to submit your questions or whatever you need uh, through the Q&A, because we can't unmute anyone to, to help you out um, that way. Uh, the slides and the recording from this uh, this evening, those will be sent out via email about 24 hours after we conclude uh, to everyone who registered. Uh, and we'll also post it on uh, the LodgeMaster website and the documentation site for review later. Uh, so hopping right into it, uh, why we're here tonight. Uh, so the unit election manager, uh, it's brand new tools uh, that we're bringing to the Lodge to help them digitally uh, schedule and manage their elections. Uh, the new tools uh, eliminate the need for paper calendars at chapter meetings or for a, a chapter chief to send out, you know, dozens of emails trying to schedule elections uh, with the different units. Um, this, all that is rolled into this new election management module uh, within LodgeMaster. Uh, some of the tools we have, uh, they can print ballots and uh, election reports to take with them to the to the elections. So no more ripping up note cards or finding a notebook from someone to make ballots. We have pre-printed ballots available in the system. We have reports available uh, from the at the chapter level all the way up to the lodge level. So you can see exactly where you're at uh, an executive committee meeting. You can see, you know, how you're doing on your, your goal to get 100% unit visitation for elections and the camp promotions. We have very uh, easy to, to read and view reports built in. Um, there's charts uh, in the module so you can quickly see, you know, how you're doing visually without having to run a report, look at it, it's right on the dashboard of the, of the module. The also, one of the, the biggest pieces that we're really excited to show tonight is the comprehensive communication suite. Uh, where lodges can set up communications for the entire process from the start of inviting a unit to schedule an election with the lodge to welcoming candidates after uh, their election, reminding them that they you know, have their ordeal coming up. These emails and letters, we do have some letters in there. Uh, they're all fully customizable by the lodge um, and they are automatically sent out. Uh, so the lodge will configure when they go out at what frequency, uh, which ones are going out. Uh, so you no longer need to you know, remember to send that postcard or have somebody on the uh, lodge uh, you know, communications committee send a reminder uh, Lodge Master in the new unit election module is automatically going to do that for you. Uh, so it should improve, you know, our goal or our hope is that it, you know, beefs up your communication with candidates, you know, before with the Scout Master, uh, with the candidates as they're going through the process. Um, and we not just communicate with candidates, but uh, unit leader communication as well. Um, so if they, you know, they know that they can schedule an election uh, and that they have an election coming up and what they needed to do and, and to prepare for that for the, the unit or the uh, candidates in their unit. The unit leader portal, 
uh, we are building a, a brand new unit leader portal that'll be built into Scoutbook um, later, later this fall. Uh, but the unit leader portal, um, because it's going to be built into Scoutbook, uh, unit leaders will log in with their BSA ID, a login that they use now to access Scoutbook and internet advancement. Um, they're not going to have to create an account in ID, our authentication system. They're going to use something they're already familiar with, uh, which will remove the barriers for a unit leader getting involved with the Order of the Arrow. They won't have to, you know, figure out a lodge portal. We know now that Several lodges have their own request systems where people may need to log in or they got to request an account. They have to know some unit ID or they have to know some unique ID to be able to schedule an election. We remove all those barriers with a, a portal that'll be very familiar to them uh, right inside Scoutbook. What they'll be able to do in that unit leaders, they'll be able to request an election and enter possible dates for the lodge. Uh, we have the ability they can enter up to three request dates. Uh, they also uh, can put in, you know, the, the time that that election is and where it's at. That information is sent back to the lodge into the new election module uh, where the lodge can confirm that date um, and, and trans give that, send that back to the unit that, you know, the lodge has, you know, they accepted the election for, you know, August, you know, 27th at 7 p.m. Go ahead and enter your candidates. At that point, uh, the unit leaders to be able to directly input candidates pulling from their unit roster in Scoutbook. They're not gonna manually have to enter data anymore. They can pull that data right over from Scoutbook uh, and it'll populate back into Lodge Master. Once they do that, uh, after the election, the unit leader will be able to see and track the candidates progress up to the ordeal. So they'll you know, see who, who was elected uh, and, and how they're doing on their ordeal journey um, and, and where they're at. And uh, a little later on, uh, there'll be the ability for unit leaders to track all OA members in their unit, seeing dues, uh, their due statuses, their brotherhood status, uh, their candidates. They'll have one comprehensive portal and a common system where they'll be able to look at their OA members and, and manage uh, their ordeal, you know, their or manage their ordeal candidates, but also uh, just the OA members in their unit. And then a new member portal has been developed for candidates. Uh, candidates will be invited uh, after their, uh, you know, their election and the, the status has been in, in the election module. Uh, candidates will be able to log in with an arrow ID to a brand new portal, uh, which later will become a member wide or an all member portal. Uh, candidates, once they log into this portal with arrow ID, they'll be able to see upcoming events. They'll be able to register. There's, a, there's registration links built right into the portal on the homepage when they first log in, inviting them that they need to register for their upcoming ordeal. They haven't done that. They need to sign up. In the future, we may offer registration directly in the Lodge Master, so they won't even need to leave the Lodge Master system to register for their ordeal. They'll be able to register with their member information that's been pulled over from Scoutbook right into Lodge Master. They'll be a register for that event, make any payments that we need to be made right through Lodge Master. Those are features that we would add down the road, but it's possible through the new portal. Right now, there's links to the council registration system or a lodge registration system, depending on what your lodge uses. Fully customizable by the lodge as to what goes there. Candidates will also be able to get ready for their ordeal by completing their pre-ordeal tasks. Uh, this may include things like uh, watching some videos that the lodge has prepared about the upcoming ordeal, uh, reading their Spirit of the Arrow book, uh, reviewing a packing list or some type of letter that maybe the lodge chief has, has wrote and published to the portal. It's fully customizable by the lodge. The lodge can add as many or as few steps to their journey and their pre-ordeal tasks uh, as they would like. Uh, we have things, you know, for text items, uh, videos, uh, links uh, that all can be built into a pre-ordeal uh, task where they'll uh, log in and they can easily see their status. And so uh, lodges, you know, that need to send things out or they want them to, you know, make sure that a candidate has viewed it, they can now publish it in the pre-ordeal task and the candidate can actually mark off that they've completed it. And then uh, in addition to, to the, you know, registering for the events and seeing that they haven't, and the pre-ordeal tasks, we also have a new contact form built into the member or into the candidate portal uh, that removes the barriers of a, you know, elected candidate trying to figure out how to contact the lodge. Some lodges have, you know, a great website. Some lodges use the council website. It's hard to often find uh, 
lodge officer or chapter officer contact information and we realized that and so we built a a uh, simple and easy to use contact form that allows the candidate to select uh, who they want to contact and send a message directly from the portal. So they don't need to leave the member portal to do anything. Uh, everything that they need to do prior to coming to the ordeal uh, will be done through the new candidate portal. And then being, coming this fall will be an enhanced candidate portal for them to continue uh, the process of ordeal onto brotherhood. Uh, so the uh, ordeal members at this point will log back into a portal that they're already familiar with, with their arrow ID, where they started their ordeal journey, they'll log back in. And then now they'll see a similar process and similar steps for their brotherhood. There'll be a pre-brotherhood uh, checklist and pre-brotherhood uh, journey in the member portal. At this point, the brotherhood portal or the member portal. Uh, they'll be able to complete that which again includes things, uh, tasks of they need to read something, they need to watch something, provide them you know, the, the packing list or some type of welcome letter. Uh, they'll be able to complete those on an easy to use journey module in the member portal. They'll also be able to sign up for a brotherhood event where a brother is being offered. So there'll be links uh, right in the portal for them to register for an upcoming event that's gonna be offering brotherhood, uh, removing the barrier of trying to figure out which events can I go to, to do my brotherhood. They no longer have to search the lodge calendar, the council calendar. We show that right in the portal for them. In this post ordeal process, uh, it's going to open up communication uh, between the lodge and the new candidates uh, and hopefully, you know, strive for that 100% activation and get them to brotherhood. Uh, we really think that the portal, you know, lodges will have an easy way to, to contact candidates and those eligible for brotherhood. Uh, and so we hope that, you know, this helps lodges and is able to assist you getting to your 100% activation. And then lastly, coming in early 2021 is a member portal for all members. So every member of the Order of the Arrow will be able to be invited and gain access to a member portal where they'll be able to see their basic, their contact information. Uh, they'll be able to pay their dues directly through the portal. They'll be able to register for events directly through the portal. So no longer will lodges need to host a dues payment system and a registration system and an ordeal registration system and some type of brotherhood registration. We're, gonna pro we're providing all of these tools in one single portal for every Order of the Arrow member. Order of the Arrow members, they'll log in with their Arrow ID, an ID and a login system that they're probably already, they're already familiar with, they've probably already used as they register for an event through NORS. Uh, if they were a candidate, they had access, you know, uh, back when they were elected, they got access to this portal and they have used the portal through their ordeal and through brotherhood. And now this general portal, they're able to come back every year and pay their dues and register for events. Uh, so this, uh, we're eliminating the barriers for lodges that, you know, don't have that tech person that, you know, is able to help them with a website or the councils, you know, can't provide them some registration system. We're going to solve all those problems with a portal uh, that we're providing free to lodges. So you're probably wondering, when we're gonna release all these tools. I just give you a bunch of information about all these new member portal, all these portals and these new tools, but when are you actually gonna get your hands on them? So the election management and the candidate member portal, those are gonna be available next week. We had set up momentum that we were gonna release them uh, this week after our uh, webinar. Uh, the team, we realized that some lodges in some parts of the country, they're back to having in-person events. And so we didn't want to cause, uh, you know, we didn't want to do an update on Friday and there'd be some, un you know, an unexpected issue where we would have extended downtime. And so we have rescheduled uh, the launch of the election management tools and of the candidate member portal to Tuesday of next week. So we will not be doing the release uh, on Friday as we had set at Momentum. Uh, but instead, these, the election management and the candidate portal will come on August 25th. Uh, so we will get an email out with that downtime uh, due to some of the technical changes and the changes behind the scenes for these portals and the tools. Uh, we need some extended downtime from what we originally had said. So we do apologize for, for that last minute change, but uh, we really, we wanted to provide the best experience for our users. And so we uh, thought it'd be best to wait till Tuesday when lodges weren't getting ready for an event this weekend, uh, if you're in a part of the country where you're having those events. But coming in this November to December tentatively of this year will be the unit leader portal built into Scoutbook. So 
later this year in December, towards the end of the year, we'll have a the Brotherhood member portal rolled out. And then the first quarter of next year uh, will be the portal for all members. Um, that is, you know, our tentative release plan. Uh, with that, Chad, are... just to just to add, on the unit leader portal side, we're developing that in conjunction with the BSA's IT team. So some of it is dependent on their schedule to to actually get that in place. But we are aiming for the end of the year for that. But just to set expectations clearly for everybody that we we're working with that team. So it it may be a little longer. We certainly hope not, but that's our goal. Thank you, Mike. Uh, with that, uh, those are the slides we had. Uh, we are going to transition here over to a demo. So if you bear with me, uh, we are going to get set up here for a live demo. All right, so the live demo portion of our webinar tonight. Uh, you'll notice this page looks a little bit different. This is one Ted, of the new- Ted, you need to move to the other monitor. Uh-oh, sorry about that. Let me, I, you couldn't see, see that. Moment. All right, take two. Sorry, everyone. Uh, so this is a portal that looks brand new. You've never seen this. This is another uh, exciting thing we're, we're rolling out uh, on Tuesday it will be now. Uh, but this is our new uh, portal, uh, portal.oa-bsa.org. Uh, we'll take you to this brand new portal. We're logging in with your Arrow ID. You'll have access to a variety of OA systems, whether that be LodgeMaster or the member portal uh, or you know, anything we develop in the future that uses the Arrow ID system uh, potentially be in this portal. Right now, that's LodgeMaster and the new member portal. Uh, so this is changing, Lodge Advents. You'll see this refreshed portal uh, starting on Tuesday. Uh, so I'm going to access Lodge Master. We're taken to the familiar uh, dashboard that we're all used to in Lodge Master. On Tuesday, Lodge Admins, you're going to need to go into Users uh, and grant the permissions uh, for the new uh, inductions module. So we do have a new inductions module. You'll need to grant those, those permissions. Uh, it is, uh, does follow our um, structure, the lodge structure, as far as chapters rolling up to the lodge. Uh, so when we do enable that module, you'll need to go in and, and enable access to that. I did want to point that out. Uh, so that on Tuesday, when you get excited and you log into Lodge Master after the update's complete, and if you don't see it, this is why. You need to go in and give yourself access to that and then anybody else who's going to be using the system. Enough with the admin side of it. Let's hop right into the inductions module. This is our brand new inductions module with the dashboard that I mentioned that updates live. Every time you log in here, every time you refresh this page, you're going to get an instant update on your election statuses. You're going to see how many are scheduled, those completed, what's posting. You have very, you know, forward grids here of what's coming up units that have requested an election through the unit portal in Scoutbook. You can see right here, we have two units that have requested an election. We need to take care of those. You can hop right in here and schedule those. You can see uh, elections that have been completed. They're waiting posting uh, all from a one dashboard, a single pane of glass. You can see all of the, all the information, the critical stats about our inductions. I mentioned a report that you could take to your executive committee meeting. Right here on the dashboard, you can run the statistics report and see exactly how your chapter is doing or exactly how the lodge is doing. Pulls the data from the dashboard into an easy one-page printable report that you can take you with you to a committee meeting or you can email this out. That's our dashboard. But let's hop into the setup and take a look at how we get this module running because we need to get it set up and get it running so we can start using it. Um, so hopping into our induction setup. Here, you need to input some, some contact information to put some names uh, to positions. Uh, we need, need to do some setup. Uh, so in here, your Lodge Elections contact and their advisor, uh, the candidate contact, uh, the when lodges or when your units can request elections. So you're gonna wanna go in and set this of when your election period is. Maybe you do elections in, in January to May. Go ahead and put those dates in here, when your elections start, when they end. If your lodge doesn't have somebody that's separate for elections and candidates, maybe that's the same person. 
set that to the same person. This searches your member database. You can set that to the same person if you don't have you know, two separate people doing that. That's all right. This module, you can put them in here. We do have some um, toggles here as far as you know, if elections are run by chapters or if they're done on the lodge level, uh, fully customizable uh, for your lodge. There's also a toggle here to give units access uh, to the election. So the lodge has the ability to control that right here from the setup. Moving on down our setup page are our chapter contacts. What these are is the show, most likely it's the, the chapter chief, or if you're depending on your chapter structure, it's the, you know, the scout, the arrowman, who's uh, the election contact for that chapter. Very easy to edit. We hop in, it searches the member database, so you can enter their name, set that, set their advisor, save this, you can do that for all your chapters. As that information changes, as you have Lodge Elections, come in here and make the update. Uh, it's, it's live, you can edit this all the time, and save that. Fill in their advisor, uh, you'll notice these are optional. We, we don't uh, have our required star. Uh, so fill in for the chapters that you can. Moving on down the page is the communications piece. This is the, the, the bulk of, this, of the setup. And this is the, the piece that uh, we really feel is going to make a, a, the biggest, one of the biggest impacts and, and, has the, and, and does a lot for the lodge. There's 22 customizable communication templates in here ranging from everything that we mentioned from uh, requesting, you know, the election scheduling request that goes to the unit, uh, to, the, to the recap message that goes back to the unit that the election was done. We have the letters for the, the candidates that they, you know, congratulations, they've been elected to the Order of the Arrow. What the heck is the Order of the Arrow? Uh, or what did I get elected to? Those are fully customizable in here. And we have a wizard to drive you through building these. So our unit election scheduling request, I want this to send on uh, we do our elections in the fall. I want this to go out on September 1st. I can put a custom, customizable block of text in here. And it fills in on the letter. So you can add, the Lodge can customize these letters. We have two blocks on this letter. You can put in here whatever information you want. Over here, you get a preview updating live. You can see there's my text updating live. Down here, it's updating live. You can see down here uh, who, you know, who it's going to be signed by all the, the placements, all those you know, uh, smart text replacements that we put in there, all right here, it's updating live. I filled my text in, I save and continue, on to the next letter I go. Uh, this is the reminder uh, for the unit leaders, they've not scheduled an election. Well, we want every unit to schedule an election, so we're gonna remind them every 14 days that, hey, you've not scheduled your election, you need to do that. We wanna send these, we wanna give them, you know, our initial emails going out, we said September 1st, We'll give them a couple weeks because Scout Masters, you know, maybe not the best technology sometimes. So we'll give them a couple weeks to check their email uh, and, and get into Scout Book. Maybe the Scout Master isn't the one doing Scout Book, so they, you know, talk to their advancement chair. So we'll give them a little bit of time. But we, we want to say on the 21st, we're going to send uh, an email every 14 days until the, we do our elections till the end of November. So between then, for every 14 days, they'll get an email. Hey, you haven't, you know, completed your election. You want to add some custom text? Again, we add custom block text to this. Like that. I'm going to save and continue. And I'm going to move through this wizard. As I said, there's 22 customizable templates. So hop in here and you can start customizing them. If I hop out of here, you can see here uh, I can hop in a single edit. If I don't want, you know, if I just need to make a slight change to one of them, you can edit these directly tab through here, you can see all of the different options in here. I want to edit this one, you know, maybe uh, I don't want it to go 21 days. That's a little early. So we're going to knock that down to 15 days before uh, and save that. All customizable by the lodge, the frequency at which they run at, it's all driven by what the lodge wants and how the lodge wants the communications to work. But the beauty is if you set this up, you don't have to remember to send anything out. Lodge master in the inductions module is going to do it for you you won't even have to think about it. The emails will be going out, people will be scheduling their elections, and you'll be on your way to that 100% of a unit elections completed. And then in setup, we have our induction journeys. This is what we mentioned uh, for the ideal and brotherhood process. In here, uh, we have some welcome to the Order of the Arrow and the Spirit of the Order of the Arrow books. 
Then we have some customizable ones that the lodge added. So here we have a, a task for them to check out the lodge website. So we enter a title here. We tell them where they need to go. We set the type. So this is a link. They need to view that link. We put the link in, what we want that link to say. You know, maybe we want, uh, you know, to make it really clear. So we say, click here. Live update, just like the communications template, we're updating live right here in the inductions module as you're filling these out. I'm gonna save this. We also have video options right here. So the lodge has a video teaching them how they need to, to make a bedroll. Put the video URL in, we support YouTube and Vimeo. It'll automatically display the video preview and show exactly what the step's gonna look like. You can even preview the video right into the, in the module. You don't even have to save this and go log into some portal to see what it looks like. We show you right here. Make it really easy for lodges to set this up. And you'll be able to add as many as you want in here uh, and make this fully customizable. You can change the order. Uh, you maybe want them to review what to pack first or you, know, you wanna do that last. It's fully customizable. You can add and delete. Make this you know, fit your induction process and what you want your deals to see. Going back to the dashboard, our election, you know, the induction module is set up. That's typically gonna be done by an adult. Uh, maybe the, you know, the lodge vice chief of elections is gonna assist the adult, uh, but that does require you know, a special permission to get into this setup. Uh, so somebody in your lodge, if you're a chapter chief on our call tonight, somebody in your lodge is most likely gonna set that up for you. Uh, the, the other piece of setup that I wanna cover is the team setup. This is completely optional. If you don't use Teams or you, you don't know who your team is because you know, Johnny makes a phone call to somebody before the election and says, hey, can you help? And he says, yes. And they meet, you know, mom drives them to the election. They ride with the, you know, the chapter advisor and another lodge advisor to that election. You don't have to set these up, but if you know ahead of time who your teams are, you can add the teams in here and you can pull these into the process later. I know that I'm gonna have a team helping me with this tonight. The way Lodge Master Team is gonna do an election tonight. Uh, you can select the chapter that it goes with, uh, and then you can enter their names. Fill out as many or as few as you will I like. We have youth and adults. You can fill both in, you can only fill youth in. Whatever fits your lodge, they're all optional. I'm gonna save this. Our OA Lodge Master election team is set up. Two of us are going to, this, to an election at some point. You can edit these, you can add as many as you'd like, you can have as few as you like, completely customizable. Uh, a pretty basic uh, uh, thing, you know, I think you'll get the hang of setting it up. We're not gonna spend a lot of time here, but I did wanna show that we do have, uh, you know, the ability to, to set a team if you have defined teams, or maybe you come in here after the election and you set up the, the, uh, the team afterwards and put it in. You can do that, because uh, that team you know is gonna do some more, completely up to you. Enough with the setup. We don't want to see any more setup. Let's get to actually doing an election. So right here, we can see on our dashboard that Troop 125, there's a visit scheduling. They've requested an election. So I'm going to open that up. We can see, so on August 1st, uh, we have, uh, they submitted their request. They put three dates in uh, that they're available. We know who put it in, the requester, any, info, any uh, you know, data that they sent us back. Uh, the feedback or the text, there's a, a spot for them to send information. We see that right here. Well, unfortunately, you know, tonight for our purposes, uh, we'll schedule this for tonight so that we can, we're going to use this unit. Um, but you would, you know, set this, you know, probably, you know, hopefully one of the times they picked worked. If it doesn't, you know, you can communicate with the lodge uh, and, and work to find one. Here I'm going to set our scheduled date, the time, what's happening. So we're going to do an election. We're also going to do a camp promotion, OA promotion. If you're not doing an election, you know, this module has the ability to track that you did a camp promotion. Uh, tonight, we're, just, we're, we're worried about and we're, we're focusing on the, the unit election piece of this. I'm going to leave that checked. We're also going to do a camp promotion and OA promotion over there. The address, if you use our new sync tools for units where you sync data from Scoutbook uh, into LodgeMaster for units, look at that. Our address pulled over automatically. Our lodge contacts pulled in based on the chapter of where this uh, unit is at because Lodge Master is fully aware of that. Uh, that's the power of the Lodge Master system. If you use every module, uh, they all work together uh, to provide this uh, seam line and, and simple solution. Pulls all this information over for you. We know who the unit leader is. If you need to make a change that, you know, he got a new phone number or this isn't correct, you can make a change and save it here. 
At this point, Troop 125, this election is scheduled. At this point in the unit leader portal in Scout Book, the unit leader will be able to send over their eligible candidates. They'll be able to go through and mark off that the candidates, you know, here's the candidates that are eligible, they've met the requirements. That information will sync directly to LodgeMaster. When you hop in here and come on down here to Eligible Youth, you'll see this information pulled over from Scoutbook. The Lodge won't have to enter anything anymore. If something's missing, you can add it, but it should all be there from Scoutbook. Here, we're in the scheduled screen and anything, this is all editable at this point, the Lodge, the Chapter Chief, whoever's doing this election, whoever the Lodge sets up access to this module, they're able to make any changes they need in here, update the unit contact. Maybe they know who the youth, you know, the unit leader, who the youth is, the unit leader copied them on an email or something. They happen to be an arrowman, so I'm gonna search for them and select them. I added them, fills it in. Can you share this information? Fill it in if you have it. If you don't have it, it's not required. You can still use this module. You don't have to have every piece of information to use this module. Our visit team, they're the Lodge Master team. They're going to do this election, and it pulled in the team members automatically. If this isn't correct, if somebody is joining us, I can go ahead and add them right here, our adults, and then our eligible youth. If this didn't come over from Scout Book, or this, this, the, maybe the unit doesn't use Scout Book fully like they should because uh, they like those paper records for some reason, and they tell you, they give you an email with people who are eligible. The Lodge can come in here and add them before the election to create ballots. So we're going to add our eligible youth to this. So we're going to enter their information. You can see we collect the basic information right up front so that the lodge has accurate data, no more getting spreadsheets that are missing addresses or phone numbers. We collect it right here. You can put it in if you have it. It comes over from Scoutbook. This data feeds back into the, the core member module in LodgeMaster. We get their contact information right away. I'm going to save that. I've added our first eligible youth. This module is designed only for youth, so you won't add adults here. That's an important thing. This is only for youth, so you'll only be able to add the youth here, and that's who the unit will be syncing over. The adults will still go through a traditional election process uh, via the, the unit leader. So we're going to go ahead and enter a few uh, uh, eligible youth here uh, because we want to have some data to work with later so we can see just what this module can do because it can do a lot. Uh, if we don't have some data here, we can't show off everything that can do. So I'm going to quickly enter some data here so we have something to work with. You can enter as many or as few here. We support it, whatever. It's fully customizable, flexible. And we're going to add uh, one more quickly uh, just so that we have some more data to work with. Uh, we're going to date picker, common to Lodge Master. Chad, while you're filling that in, one question that came up from this screen, people saw that the BSA ID isn't required. That's just from a lodge admin perspective. Um, the BSA ID will be required when unit leaders are setting up scouts. From, from a lodge perspective, it's not required, but it will be um, for all the, the front end access for, for candidates and for units. And we would, you know, suggest that lodges collect that if you're able to. Uh, so the, uh, that's in Lodge Master. So if you're able to get that, go ahead and enter it. Uh, so at this point, we have our eligible youth in here. This is filled out and ready to go. I'm going to save and close this. If I go back to the dashboard, we were just working with Troop 125. You may have noticed our bars changed a little bit because we scheduled it. We weren't scheduled before. We got 40 scheduled now. And look at we got 35 posted. This updated 
as soon as I went back, you got the updated picture of where you're at. Also what happened, our upcoming visits, we're going to Troop 125 tonight. So uh, if I hop into this, we're getting ready to go to this election. Who's, we're gonna print our unit election report. Look at that, it filled out our name, the personal, the BSA ID, the gender, their rank, the basic information that we need at the election. There's also filled in the unit information. You're gonna print this out and take it with you to election. So we, you know, this, this kind of follows your traditional process, right? We take this with us. So you can save this as a PDF. You can print it right from LodgeMaster. And you're gonna take it with you. When you get there, you're gonna ask the Scott Master, you know, the number of how many youth you have in your unit, how many are here tonight. You're gonna fill this in. You're gonna write it on this sheet of paper, just like you would with your traditional lodge election forms. That's not changing. We've just put this information in for you. We've just filled out the names. No more having to scribble those in. The unit leader is still gonna sign that the above you know, youth members are eligible and approved for election so you can continue with your election. We didn't, we're not changing that. That's staying the same. We're just making this easier for you. At this point, uh, you know, you'd fill out you know, the number eligible, the number of votes required, fill that out you know, based on the OA election procedures. You're also then gonna hand out your ballots that you printed ahead of time. Going back into the induction module, we have pre-filled ballots. No more ripping up paper. You print these out, as many copies as you need. We got simple check boxes to make it easy. No more figuring out if that's a check marks or an X meaning no, none of that. Simple check marks, make it easy to count. You know, print these or save them right here from Lodge Master. After you have the election, after you've done, write in the number elected when it was announced. If it was announced that night, fill it in on this sheet. This sheet you have, this is just like your traditional form. We're not making the lodge, the lodge doesn't need to figure out how to do these digitally. You print this out and take it with you. It's easy. We also have a candidate info form. So if you do show up to the election and Bill has moved into town and he joined the unit last week and he wasn't in scout book yet, but he's eligible, write his information right on this candidate info form when you're at the election. If something's wrong up here, you can correct it, cross it out and write the right thing. Just make sure that gets put back in Lodge Master. But just because somebody wasn't in scout book doesn't mean you can't have them on the, the ballot that night. You can write, we have additional blank lines on the ballot. You can collect their information on this candidate info form. You can write their name into the election report and mark if they're elected. So we fully support if you're not able to capture this information before you go, you can print these out and they'll be blank if you don't fill in any names. So you go ahead and print these out, take them with you and have the Scoutmaster write in the information if you're not able to get it digitally and electronically before. We encourage that you do, but we understand that that's not always possible. So we have other means and uh, still ways, we provide ways that you can use this module, even if you're not fully digital yet. So saving and going back, we've done our election at this point. So I'm gonna hop in here. And we're gonna go to Troop 125. I'm gonna post my results. You'll also see over here, our awaiting posting, uh, this dynamically updates with your elections that are needing to be posting. I can see it here. I can also go into my election management. I got these cool statuses. Look at this. I can filter this right here. They're scheduled. Look at that. There's my 125. If you're a chapter chief, you're only gonna see your chapter in here. You want to figure out which, which units do I need to do elections for. We take care of that. It filters for you. You got these cool statuses that you can filter on. Oh, I got a unit that requested it. I need to schedule that. Or I know I have one scheduled. Super, super easy. Sortable, filterable, everything. Standard grids that you're used to in Lodge Master, right here. Trip 125 though, posting the results. We hit post results. This brings up a modified view of the schedule form that we're used to. If there's something incorrect here, you can correct it. You can jump down to the eligible youth. We have a new election status column. So chat, he was elected. Uh, Mike, unfortunately, was not elected, uh, but Rob was elected. There's the statuses. If, a, if a, a scout says, I don't want to do this, they decline to be on the ballot. We also have that ability to decline an election. If they're not elected, we can fill that out. Down here, our election report to finish that out. At this point, you have that paper form that you filled out. Have that next to your computer or next to your tablet. This module works on mobile. You can do this from your phone. Have it with you. On the car ride home, you can fill this in. The status, if it was announced, you're going to announce it in the future. This election, we're going to say it was announced. Uh, if you, it's going to be in the future, 
We have the date. When is it going to be announced? When's the unit doing that? We announced it tonight. The callout event, you would select your callout event. Uh, define this, I think, I don't, uh, if you had a, a callout event selected for this chapter, it'd show up there. Our welcome event. Down here, our active youth, they had 25 in their unit. They had 20 there. There was three eligible. They turned in 20 ballots. We know that they need 50%. They need 10. The number elected, we had two. The unit leader approval. Mr. Dickman approved that. The unit leader signed it. If the lodge, the lodge can scan in that election report and save it to their Google Drive or a Microsoft OneDrive or whatever the lodge uses for file sharing, they can scan that and save it. Here, we're just capturing the name. You're not scanning anything in. If I'm not done with this, I can save and close it and go back in if I'm not able to submit it. I'm going to hop back into the post. I'm going to jump down to eligible youth. Review it. Oh, he's missing a BSA ID. Update. I can throw in that BSA ID right there before I submit this. Okay, this looks good. You're going to submit this for approval. As a chapter chief, this is going up, you know, to whoever in your lodge is designated to approve elections. That may be the chapter advisor or some vice chief of members or, you know, an admin type person, some membership position. However your lodge defines positions, we support it but you're gonna submit this for approval. So I submit this for approval. You can see it's posted. If I filter, this is gonna update. I can see I posted results for 125. If we go back to the dashboard, look what our dashboard updated already. That, that was lightning fast. Like I can see now I have 36 posted. That, that's super fast. Lodge admin's gonna hop in here to election management. He's gonna probably, I'm gonna filter. He's gonna filter, she's gonna filter for posted. And oh, look it, the chapter chief has posted some results. It's time to view and approve those. This is the final check to make sure that everything looks perfect before we send this to the member module in Lodge Master. You gotta make sure everything, we're gonna button it all up and make sure everything looks good. As the admin or the person approving these, I'm gonna review this. This looks great. If they're missing something, I can fill it in. Oh, they, you know, they didn't fill in their OA representative, but I know, you know, uh, that they have an OA representative and I'm gonna fill that in, it's gonna pull that information in. This is just information that we save with this election. You don't have to fill it in, it's optional. If you know who that is, fill it in. Our visit team, if you know that somebody else helped out, you can throw that on, or if this looks good, continue as is. Here's the eligible youth, you can see what they submitted. You can review that paper form that they turned in. If one was missed, you can add it here. You can perform updates. If this BSAID, you know, they missed a digit, you can save it. If this data came over from Scout Book and it's missing something, you can fill that in. Or if something's you know changed and hasn't you know synced everywhere yet, you know between the BSA system and Lodge Master, you can update it here before saving it. You also review the election report, make any adjustments that are required. If they you know had nine in here, that's incorrect, and you you know you can correct that to ten. Make sure this all looks great. Again, you can save and come back to it. We're going to approve this election. So I'm gonna approve the election. You get a final check that this can't be undone. If you, you know, if this uh, a unit that has 25 uh, eligible youth and they, they were all elected and you hit okay and check this box and you come back and, oh, I, I didn't mean to do that. Unfortunately, we, we can't undo that. Uh, so you know, please read this, this check. Uh, we don't wanna, you know, we hate to see a ticket where you, you, you approved a bunch of uh, candidates and didn't mean to. So this final check, please look at it. I'm gonna click okay. At this point, our three, uh, our two candidates, excuse me, one was not elected. Uh, they are now uh, in the member module of Lodge Master. So if I flip, flip over to members and I look at elected, there's my record in members. If I go into it, my election date's there. My contact information came over automatically. This person is ready to go to their call out. They're ready to start using the member portal. At this point, the election is complete. Our results have updated. Our completed is now updated. If we hop in here, we go to our unit. We can see it's approved. We have some printable letters in here, the candidate congratulation letter. I can run this. If 
for my chapter, for all chapters. We can throw in you know, the ordeal cost here, extra items that they get, a registration URL if we know what that is. Submit that. Our letter is going to dynamically build based on our communication wizard. It automatically lists for this chapter which uh, induction weekends are available that they can come to. It automatically pulled that from events in Lodge Master. So that goes back to using Lodge Master for every aspect of your Lodge management. We're able to pull those events over so they don't need to search around for what event they can do this at. It's right here in the letter for them. Easily available. Down here, you can see who they need to contact, the registration URL, the $50, you know, uh, the weekend's $50. We have that cost right here. If your lodge gives them something else, we build it right into this letter for you. You can run this for a chapter, a lodge. You can print these out uh, and mail them, email them, however your lodge wants to do it. Another letter that I didn't touch on, but it's in here is the unit uh, election scheduling letter. You can again run it for all chapters or the whole lodge or a single chapter of the whole lodge, excuse me. And in here it explains you know, what the order of the arrow is, what the qualifications are, everything that they need to know about the election to schedule it. I'm going to close that. That's the election module. I assume at, with that, Mike, do we have some questions? Yes. <laughs> we, I see. We have lots of questions. Um, so do I, you want to show see... them the, the stats report first, Chad? Yeah, I, I did. So if we hop back to the dashboard, our election statistics report, I can run this. Look, we look at that. You can see exactly, you know, the overall, the same status bars that we have on the dashboard are now in this report that you can print out. We also give you some visit details that dig down into the, the chapter level of exactly how many are scheduled, not scheduled, if they declined, uh, where they're at. Speaking of declined, I left, I left something out. How could I, I apologize, but we left out what happens if unfortunately a, a unit isn't going to have a, an election. From here, you, we do have the decline option. We do record the reason. If they have no one eligible, they refuse to visit uh, or other. You can uh, um, put, that, put that in here if there's another reason, uh, no contact and save that. So you do see declined um, and, and have that there. Uh, and some people did ask about units that don't have anyone eligible. The system's fully set up to be used for visits as well as, um, as actual election. So you can set it up to not actually do a unit election and just do a camp promotion or no a promotion and record that visit that took place with that unit and that's used for all your statistics as well. So and if that's there's no feed. one eligible, it, it handles that. And that'll feed right back into PMP, right, Mike? Correct, yes. As is the election, right? So all these election stats will all be calculated into PMP for the lodge. We are about at the top of the hour, so I do want to do some questions while we're on this module. I do see we have uh, well well over uh, 100 here so uh, that have been submitted. So we, we are obviously are not going to be able to get through all of these tonight, but Mike, do you have any that uh, we could take yeah, right now? Yeah, I think now? we can just cover some general themes, right. um, and then we can go to specific questions at the end. Okay. Um, but in, in general, we've had a lot of questions about how the unit leader portal will work and how that would work since we mentioned Scoutbook. It'll be uh, integrated with both Scoutbook and Internet Advancement. So it will work for units that don't use Scoutbook itself, the, the same place where they go in and record um, advancements that the OA piece will be available in there. Um, so it's something that will be available to all units. Um, Excellent. That, that's one of the major um, things that, that people have asked so far. Okay. Um, and, and people also did ask who will have access to the unit leader portal. It'll be everyone who's set up with, with um, delegated access, I believe it's called in Scoutbook. So it's not just the unit leader specifically himself. We can maybe take questions for a few more minutes on this, on some more general ones, and then we do have some, some, we have more to show you. I mean, we've already, you know, 
hang on because this this launch isn't over. Um, so so people ask some some things about um, how much you can record. So you're welcome to record additional um, contact types for candidates a after they're added through elections. Um, if you collect additional information, that all that functionality is still there as it has been in the past. Um, and people ask, so people have asked a lot about um, what data will be pulled from Scoutbook and Intuit Advancement. It, if they have email addresses or addresses and all of that, all of that information will be pulled in um, using sync sort of like we do for units. Um, and what, and we'll be doing training. And so I know people have a lot of questions about the unit leader portal. We'll be doing training and showing how that works and recording videos and stuff one, once that's available. So I know people have a lot of access or a lot of questions about access and how it'll work and who it can see it and whether there'll be a sandbox to plan. All of those things will be answered once, once we're able to show you how it all works and how it's integrated with Scoutbook and Internet Advancement. And on that note, we will be doing more training on, I, I envision we'll do some more training on the election module and maybe in a future webinar, we'll have some a training event. Uh, so we will have training all around for this. Mike, there's also been a lot of questions with regards to our announcement about um, payments and money and all of that stuff. Do you want to? Uh... Yeah, so so our goal in, in what Chad announced of rolling out dues payments and event payments in the first quarter of next year um, is that our goal is that it would feed directly into your council's credit card processing system. So initially off the, the bat, we're planning on integrating with authorized.net and Stripe um, so that you'll be able to take money and it'll be, and it'll go directly into your council's account, just like it does from another council system like Double Knot or Black Pug or Tenderoo. Um, or councilware or any of those tools, um, those it'll it'll work in the same fashion as that. So it won't go through your council's processing system, but instead you, the the payment will be done directly in the LodgeMaster member portal. There's also been some questions about um, with the event registration and whatnot, and NORS and and uh, how how that will, you know, is there any integration there? Um, so, so the NOR system is really meant for the section regional national level events for the Order of the Arrow, though we, we may look at doing some integrations for recording training and stuff in the future. Um, it's not something we're specifically planning on integrate. Events that are registered at those levels will be done through NORS and lodge level, chapter level events will be done through the Lodge Master platform. I think we have time for maybe a couple more questions. Sorry, I'm sorting through them. We've I, got yeah. 70 so, open right now, so. Yeah, please bear with us, everyone. Uh, oh, there I, was I a question see. on the election screen about what is a, what was, uh, not, a, not the call out event, the other event. The, uh, the welcome the session. Welcome event. Welcome session. Um, so that, that was unveiled by the OA last year along with the, at the, the Thrive event. Um, it's the idea that you'd hold a in-person event to teach people about the OA before the induction weekend. So we, we've built in the ability to set all that up and print the, the welcome session information on the letters. Uh, here's another one about what happens if a scout is not elected or declines, what happens to their info in Scout and LodgeMaster? It'll be kept in an archive state, just like we do with candidates um, in the past. Uh, asking about events, uh, is there going to be instructions on how on setting up events so to make sure that uh, they link properly together with the inductions module? Yeah, so it's real simple. The, the setup really hasn't changed, but there's a couple flags in each event. Um, that set up whether it's an ordeal induction, a brotherhood conversion, um, those flags are very important to this process. So the, those induction flags and the call out ceremony flag as well. 
Um, so those help all feed the induction process. And then whether you set an ordeal or whatever the event is as lodge wide or a specific chapter will also narrow the audience of who that event is offered to. Uh, and then Nicholas is asking about adult nominations. Uh, so one, once the unit portal is in place, um, we will be building functionality to handle um, unit recommendations that, that lodges can then review and approve. So that functionality has not been built yet, but that's something that we're definitely on our plans for the future. Uh, I got another one about what is uh, the, what is, is unit run mean? Or use uh, so we've, we've added that flag um, more for future abilities. There, there is the possibility and, and some lodges do it already to allow units to run elections for each other without a specific chapter team. Um, so as we build out some of the unit portal, we may use that flag to show resources for how to run an election. It's not really used for anything now, but just tracking whether it was a lodge team or, or a unit team, whatever that ran an election. Uh, and we've got another one about permissioning. Um, how can, how do you choose which people can approve elections in LodgeMaster? Can you make that more than one person or let certain people approve elections for specific chapters? So, so, and I think there's been a lot of questions about permissions in general. The, the inductions set up and approval and all of that is available at every level of the lodge. So you can set up so chapter people can do approvals. Um, or only a lodge person can. All of those, both administering elections and approving them, are all el available at different levels of the lodge. And you can't have multiple uh, approval people. Multiple members can approve. Multiple users can approve. Uh, another, I've, I've seen a few of these now. Uh, with regards to unit contact information, when you set that up for an election and you enter the unit contact information, does that flow back into the unit manager? It does not right now, but we, we have an enhancement plan to actually have unit contacts have start and end dates as well. Um, and once that's in place, we'll feed that information backwards from elections into the unit contacts as well. Uh, I've seen this a few times now uh, with regards to syncing information with Scoutbook. The question is, that will information be pushed back into Scoutbook? No, not at this time. Um, we, we may look at in the future, the ability to update the, um, the three dates that are in scout book. Um, but that's not something that we, that's currently planned. Uh, I've also seen this a few times. If a scout gets elected and does not complete their induction and was elected the following year, will the scout be duplicated? Um, so, so we have a tool in place at the end of the, um, election year that rather the ordeal year to archive all the remaining candidates um, and that will put them in an archive state and then there will basically be no pending non-inducted candidates and then when you start the election process next year there'll be no duplicates. With that I think uh, because we are you know kind of counting down the time here should we can we transition Mike uh, to our some of our other updates? Yes, definitely. Okay. And then we can come back to questions yep. for the last I, ten or fifteen minutes. I do see we have about seventy questions still out there. We we will work to get to them. If you have questions, I do see hands go up. But again, reminder: please use the Q and A feature. One thing that I, I want to show before I hop uh, to our next uh, to the next reveal um, is a change that we made or uh, an email. Uh, a, something we've added uh, for contact information. You'll notice on the letters that some of the letters have emails on them. We have a new uh, email type of lodge. And so whatever you put in this, whoops, whatever you put in this lodge email is what will show on those letters unless that's blank and then we'll fall back to the primary. So we did get questions uh, about how we're handling the, the YPT issue. Uh, and so that, that's what this OA, the lodge email type is for. We're aware that some lodges had a lodge email type before. We've migrated those to the new lodge contact type, uh, and that's what we're going to use on the letters. I did want to point that out before we, we move on. 
uh, at this point, our next reveal, I'm going to use our new application switcher. So I'm going to go up here and switch application. And I have been timed out. Logging into our brand new portal, the member portal. I'm going to hop into our member portal as myself. Right here on the homepage, we have a welcome message from the lodge that's completely customizable. We have an alert banner where a lodge can put in a message that, you know, due to COVID-19, our deals have been canceled. Customized by the lodge, the lodge can put as whatever they'd like here and put the alerts as things happen in the lodge. Updating your member profile. You can now update your contact information from a member portal and it feeds right back into Lodge Master. If your BSA ID, gender, or date of birth are missing, you can plug this information in right here. If it's already there, you, can't, you, you have to contact your Lodge admin to make a change, but if it's missing, go ahead and fill it in. Our email and phone numbers, you can see what's here. If one of them's bad, you'll see a little bad indicator so you know that you need to fix that. If I have another email, I can go ahead and add that in. Maybe I want this to be my primary, I flag it as my primary. I can add my mobile number. My address, I can save this and it feeds right back into Lodge Master. As a Lodge, you can control what contact types they can update. You can publish work, home, school. You can add a work, uh, a school address, whatever you want. You get to pick in the Lodge client, in the setup, which contact types are available in the portal. There's the calendar. You can see Lodge events and chapter events on here as you page through. We change the color based on the chapter. You click into it. You can see where it's at. The links to register right here. Going back, our Lodge wide event, where it's at. And then the contact the Lodge that we mentioned. It's simple, easy to use. Lodge chief and advisor, I need to contact them. I have a question about brotherhood. Put my message in and send it to the lodge right from this portal. Brand new, that's as a member. I'm gonna switch back and if I'm a candidate, we have a candidate here. If I hop in as our Johnny Scout, congratulations on our election. It knows I haven't registered for an upcoming ordeal. So it's going to show me which events, which ordeals I can register for. I can go in September or October, shows you where it's at, the dates. I can register right from here. And it's going to take me to my lodge registration that I defined in the event setup. We have those three new uh, registration links that feeds right into here. They can register from the front page. They get reminded right away. Every time they log in, they need to register to come to their ordeal. They can update their profile as well. If information is missing or something has changed, they can update it from the portal. They have the same calendar and the same contact form that a uh, member of the lodge has. And then the ordeal journey. Welcome to the Order of the Arrow. They click this, here's the video. They can click in and watch the video right in the portal. They don't have to go to YouTube or Vimeo and watch this, they can do it from the portal. When they've completed that, I've completed this. It's completed, they've completed 20%. The Spirit of the Arrow, this is text. Once they've read through this, I've completed it. And they can come back if they can't do it all at once. This saves their progress. When they log back in, they're gonna see exactly where they're at. To visit the Lodge website, they click here. It takes them to the Lodge website. They can mark this off. This is the ordeal journey. The Brotherhood will have a similar uh, a journey. If I hop back and I'm a candidate that's already registered, You'll see that I'm registered. I registered for the September ordeal. I need to complete my journey. I'm 20% complete. The portal is smart. As soon as you log in, it knows if you've registered, if you haven't registered, where you're at, and it will show you content dynamically and guide you through the ordeal process, the ordeal journey, and walk you through updating and filling out your profile. And in the future, paying your dues or registering for events will all be done from this portal, something that you log in with Arrow ID and access. I don't know about everyone else, but this portal, I'm super excited about. I mean, this, uh, this is, is, you know, the and Chad, it, to, super to Steve awesome. off questions on mm -hmm. this, 
Um, we're, we're rolling this out in a phase one as a candidate portal, though you'll see it called the member portal. That is where this is certainly heading. Um, but all of the tools that we've built for it so far are for candidates. Um, you can see there's no, there's no information about dues and stuff like that in there yet. You can't print your membership card and stuff. We promise all of that is coming as part of the, the end of year completion and when we have dues payments available. Um, so you will, and Chad will show you in a second, how to invite a member or a candidate to have an account on the member portal. We encourage you to test it out yourself but we encourage you not to send it to all your members because there really isn't a lot of functionality for them right now. Um, but once we roll out dues and have membership cards and lots more information for members in the portal later this year, that'll be when we build the tool so you can mass invite members to the portal, create accounts for them, send out the information. So just where we're headed with this and, and all of those things that you're thinking of with membership cards and dues and events and all that is coming. Um, but, but this is just the phase one of, of using this for candidates. So you're wondering how you get access. How do you get your candidates access? How do you test this out yourself as a Lodge admin? Well, it's super easy. Your Lodge, as a Lodge admin or somebody with permission, will go into Lodge Master, right on the member record. You may have noticed it before when I was in here, but we didn't touch on it because we wanted to save it. But right on the member record is this member portal account. This member doesn't have a port, uh, it doesn't have an account. I'm gonna click the add access. It's automatically gonna pull in their email from their record. If they don't have one, type it in. I'm gonna send the invite. They're gonna get an email that invites them to join the Order of the Arrow member portal. That's gonna have a button, uh, a link right in the email that says claim account. They're gonna claim their account. Uh, there'll also be a claim code in the email uh, and they'll be able to, to come into the portal and hit I have an invite, select the application they're adding access for. If it's the member portal or Lodge Master, we'll add the member portal. They'll select their council number and enter that code, add the association, and it's automatically going to add that member portal uh, access here. Parents could add, uh, you know, the, their son or daughter and, and manage their profile. You can set it as default if you have multiple. Uh, you can also set, uh, you know, if, uh, your lodge's default, if you have multiple, uh, you get to pick, it's customizable. You can remove these and remove the association from the portal. Um, that's how you add. It's really easy to get access. As Mike said, uh, once the portal's available for everyone, we will have a mass invite tool. Uh, but for now, this is, you know, kind of reserved for candidates and to test with yourself. Um, so that's how you, how you get access to this. And uh, candidates will actually automatically get accounts added as part of the communication suite. So once they get that official notification, welcome first email after they either were elected and announced immediately or whenever it was announced, included in that will be the account information for that candidate and that'll roll directly into using the portal for the candidates. I added, you can see there's, I, I have access now to my member record. I can remove it from here. That's the, that's the portal. We have a few final updates. We are closing in on our 90 minutes, but I do, uh, I am gonna flip over. We have a, 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 few, a few more things to, to talk about. So I'm gonna get screen sharing set up for that. Bear with me one minute while I switch our uh, presentation over. All right, finally, some additional project updates. Lodge support email. So on the bottom of every email that you send from Lodge Master today is a Lodge support email. On all the uh, emails that go from the new uh, inductions module and the, the uh, portal invites, all any email that comes from Lodge Master uh, from your Lodge has your support email on that. We put out a request uh, last year to have Lodges submit those. We don't have them all, we're missing a large percentage of those. So by September 30th of this year, we need every lodge to provide their support email. Lodge administrators next week uh, will receive an email with the link where to submit those emails. Uh, we will be sending reminders until September 30th or until your lodge puts an email, uh, gives us a support email. You'll get an email reminder uh, often to, to remind you to get that in because that, that support email uh, 
is, is going to be crucial as, you know, we start sending more emails so people know who to contact with help, uh, and it shows up in those emails. So by September 30th, uh, we, we do request that every lodge have submitted a, a support email. Another change is with our offline client. The offline client is going to transition to be only available upon request starting November 30th of this year. Requests to, to have access to lodge admins must be submitted by the designated lodge admins who are appointed by the scout executive. So you'll need to contact you know, your lodge admin if you're going to request offline access and they'll need to contact us. Only, we'll only be able to accept requests from the appointed administrator. So even if you have full admin access in Lodge Master, this request will need to come from the admins that we have uh, listed with the national office. Uh, once you submit the request, uh, the Lodge Master team is going to review that request and uh, grant access to offline based on need. Uh, the, the process for doing this and the link to uh, the request form, that'll be included in the email uh, about the support email. So in, in, the up, in an upcoming email to Lodge admins, you'll have the information about the support emails as well as the offline client on where exactly you, know, you go to request those. Uh, I do, I'm going to ask Mike uh, to speak a little bit about our decision regarding the offline client. This may be you know, a shock to, to some, uh, but we do have... Uh, some um, reasons behind this and we put a lot of thought into this. Uh, so Mike, could I ask you to talk about this tonight? Sure. So the, the reason we're doing this is not because we don't want to offer everything to, to every lodge. Um, the, the maintenance on the, um, the offline client is, is a huge burden for our team. And when we do updates, the amount of downtime that everyone faces uh, a lot of that has to do with the maintenance of that offline client. Um, and what we've found over the past few years, especially since we rolled out version four and even more um, in the past one to two years is that there's been less and less and less usage of the offline client. Um, so we, um, we've decided that instead of just maintaining it for every launch going forward, we'll be just providing it to those that ask for and need that access. Um, the vast majority of lodges, uh, last we looked, there, there'd only been usage this year and the past year um, by about 50 lodges out of the 275. So um, it will be much easier for our team to maintain that offline system just for those 50 that really need that access versus providing it for everyone. Um, so as you have a need for that access, we'll, we'll review that and get back to you. And if the need is real, we'll be happy to provide that access for you. Um, but just this will really help drive the ability for the project to be more agile and move forward quicker. So I um, hope that makes sense to everybody and feel free to ask questions if you have any. And so we do have about 15 minutes left. So I'm gonna quickly hop through our, our final, whoa, through our final, uh, uh, slides here. Um, we invite you to join our user group, uh, facebook.com slash group slash LodgeMaster. We also have a feature voting site where you can go suggest ideas uh, for all of LodgeMaster, including this new portal. Uh, go, you know, submit your ideas. We do have some requirements there as to, you know, what can qualify as an idea and how it gets, you know, actually accepted by the development team. The user group is great for discussions. Uh, if you have questions about LodgeMaster, it's our forum. Uh, join that group um, and, and ask fellow users for help. We ask, you know, you can follow us online on Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube. We are very close to be able to getting a custom uh, handle on YouTube. So if you are a YouTube watcher, uh, go ahead and, you know, subscribe to the, to the Lodge Master YouTube channel. That's where we post our training videos uh, as well as our webinar recordings is, is on there. If you need help, visit our support center at lodgemaster-support.oa-bsa.org. We have documentation there, troubleshooting articles, uh, a link to check support requests, uh, ex existing support requests. You can also email us at support at lodgemaster.oa-bsa.org. Please use that email for, for questions. Please don't email or Facebook message or WhatsApp or anything, you know, members of the Lodge Master team, we're just not able to provide support that way due to the volume of requests that we get and just the, the technical and security uh, around Lodge Master. We really need, we all support requests have to go through that sort of support system. We do have a status page at status.oa-bsa.org uh, where you can, uh, you can see the, the system status. That's also where we post our downtime. And you can subscribe uh, 
two updates. Uh, if we're going to be down or if there's some unexpected downtime, you can subscribe on our status page. And lastly, uh, we want to thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we are going to stick around and do questions, but uh, we do thank you. Uh, and on the call tonight, uh, I'm Chad Blanchard, the, the project lead for LodgeMaster. We had Michael Card, who serves as the project advisor, and Robert Anstett, the development lead for LodgeMaster. They were our, our webinar team. Uh, and a, a virtual round of applause to Mike and Rob uh, for their, their work on the inductions module, uh, the member portal, and everything that's to come. Uh, so for me to them, thank you, and, and thank you for everyone for joining us tonight. Uh, we couldn't obviously do this without you know, our users and the support of everyone. Uh, it is, it's, it's great to see, and, and we truly appreciate it. With that, uh, we will open it up for questions. I do see we have a, a lot again. Just we're not going to be able to get to all these. Just there, there's Yeah, we'll see how many. many we can get through in the next uh, 10 so, minutes. Um, just a couple general things. People asked about um, the unit leader information and unit information. If you watch our last webinar on unit sync, that'll explain a lot about how you can pull in um, information from um, from from the ScoutNet system directly into LodgeMaster and use that for this whole system. Um, I, we've talked about that. Let's see. Um, Yes, so candidates can still be imported um, just like you always have, um, none of the existing functionalities being taken away. Um, so I think we've talked about that. Um, oh, so there was a question, a couple of people didn't see the time field for um, when a unit meets for their election, that field is in there. Um, let's see. I think Rob's looking through the questions. Yeah, yeah I'm trying to get through them. Um, we are gonna, if some of them we already answered, we will just miss them. So if, if it's something we already covered, please, you know, try to not submit that so we can get through as many as possible. Uh, see your unit request three dates, but oh, is, oh, never mind. We just answered that one. Uh, there was a question about whether people get notified when there's approvals pending. So those emails are being added. So yes, you will get um, you will get notified when there's elections that are pending approval. Oh. Here's an interesting one, Michael. Will the archive, will the candidate archive process account for the COVID-19 extension for ideal candidates? Uh, it's the process you run based on whatever date you put in. So um, you can just choose to, to only archive candidates earlier than um, the beginning of this year. It's completely configurable by you. Um, somebody did have a question about the reports and emails about a different letterhead. Um, each of them is configured with the specific lodge um, official logo with your lodge name in it. Will this prevent uh, units from requesting elections more than once in a 12 month period? Yes. Will the Lodge calendar be exportable to, say, Outlook or Google? Um, not currently, but it's certainly something we could look at in the future. Uh, somebody had a question about windowed envelopes. The, the letters are set up to separately print labels. Um, I suppose it's something we could look at in the future, but it's hard for us to build customizations for every instance like that. Um, Somebody, oh, this is a good question. If, if you select decline for an election, does that count as a completed election for PMP? The answer is yes. So that's how it's specific. Uh, if it's declined because there's no candidates eligible, it does count as a completion. If it's just a decline, it does not. Okay. Uh, here's an offline question. Are current, are uh, people who currently have offline access grandfathered in? So everyone currently has offline access in theory, a lot don't use it. I think they, um, Mike, they mean, will they have to submit a request? And the answer is yes. Yes. No one is grandfathered in. Uh, yeah, if, so we don't, if you don't submit a request by November, uh, you will lose offline access. 
Somebody asked if register if unit leaders from the unit leader portal will see be able to see if they've registered for their ordeal or brotherhood. And yes, you'll be able to do that once the, the portal's live on the Scott book side. David's asking, is, uh, is there a place where we can tell whether or not we've submitted our support email address? For those that, Chad's gonna send a message to everybody with what the address is currently. So you'll be able to see what you have in there. And if you don't have anything. Uh, somebody asked about two parents' contact information. It's just currently set up for one, uh, a primary. We don't have, you know, parent one and two on the on the form. Uh, this is. Uh, if somebody asks uh, if a lodge requests offline, will they need requests for each user? No, you'll be requesting it uh, for the lodge. Uh, so that's why the lodge admin, so the lodge would have offline access. We don't control it based on a, a user. We would enable it for the entire lodge. Dennis is asking if you can redisplay the Facebook group page again. Absolutely. Um, so there was a question you, about, oh, oh, go ahead, sorry. Uh, Somebody had a question. How do you get added as a lodge administrator appointed by the scout exec? Uh, visit our documentation site, uh, lodgemaster-support dot oa dash bsa dot org there's a link on there uh, to update your lodge administrators the scout executive will need to fill out a form and send that to the national office how does one send mass emails to everyone including newly elected and members who also need to pay dues so that that functionality is through the member module. Um, we've done some past webinars that that'll be on the webinar page Chad sends out tomorrow that you can watch about that. Ooh, Don has a very interesting question. Our lodge is in the process of merging. Will all of these updates work while the merge is in process? Uh, we'll work with your lodge on that, Don. So feel free to submit a support ticket. Um, some people have had questions sort of in general about virtual elections and stuff that really doesn't tie into the tool per se inside Lodge Master, um, but there is a great page, the, the COVID-19 page on the national site outlines how that could work and how ceremonies work. Uh, Jeff is asking, does everyone who logs into the member portal see all members? No, so you'll only no. see members that you're connect that you've been invited to access. So it might be just you in most cases, or it might be you and kids, or you and other family members. There's a question about will there be a functionality to change from change from a youth to adult once you age out, or you have to be re-entered? I'm not sure what you you mean there. Um, members automatically carry over to adults. But yeah, you would it would carry over based on your birth date. Glenn is asking, how do candidates get their error ID for the candidate and member portal? Can you say that again, Ron? Oh, how do candidates get their arrow ID for the candidate slash member portal? So they'll get the invite email and it'll bring them to the, the login page and they'll just click create an account and, and go from there. There's a question about will the member portal remind adults of YTP compliance? YPT compliance, that's definitely something we can look at, putting an indicator or something in there. Yeah. Somebody asked, we just held an ordeal. Oh, it's scrolling. Sorry. Uh, somebody asked, uh, we just held an ordeal. Can we enter those new brothers thing, track their journey? Um, you could, I mean, if they're already in Lodge Master, um, they're not yeah, going to- Once we roll out the brotherhood portion of it, you'll be able right. to, they'll be able to access the portal and- um, not now, though, since you already have them in. Uh, Donald is asking, are there reports available for the ordeal journey? Can I see the status of my candidates? Um, we are going to make that available in the unit leader portal to unit leaders, but it's really something more for the candidate themselves. It's not, not a requirement per se, but just a way to get candidates interested and um, knowledgeable before they show up as their ordeal. So we weren't necessarily planning specifics on, on reporting on that. That's something we could look at in the future. 
Brian's asking, can those videos and parts of the ordeal candidate journey be modified and customized by the lodge? Yes, as of now, there's only planned for one or two specifically locked um, ones that are provided nationally, and then you can add everything that you'd like to after that. Um, can the portal be a specific, can be specific to a lodge domain? That is not currently planned, but you can forward a subdomain or domain to the portal if needed. Somebody asked if they, they do elections at summer camp, is there a way to put a date in instead of having to have them submit via scout book? Yes, the lodge can go in and schedule it manually. Well, somebody asked us a question about lodge structure. There is the ability to do um, any level of lodge structure just to have a something between lot between the chapter and the lodge, like an area. Uh, Donna asked, can you set up multiple election teams per chapter? Yes, there's no limit on the number you can set per chapter. Somebody asked a question about the great tool from 1990, Jumpstart. Um, and <laughs> Basically, the, the journey process that you saw for ordeal candidates will be built for brotherhood candidates in the portal as well. Um, and that will basically be the, the start of a replacement of that jumpstart area. Somebody asked uh, if current contacts in LodgeMaster will be synced to ScoutNet, like addresses and phones. No, the sync is one direction. So it brings uh, data from ScoutBook into LodgeMaster. We're not pushing back into the BSA system. Uh, somebody had a question about um, announcing dates for elections. If you don't know the specific date, you just need to put a date that, that's far enough out to make sure that the announcement emails don't go out before it. Can, the can we send the registration letter to existing members? So I believe that registration letter is specific to, is, is geared towards candidates. Only. Yes, correct. It's not, um, it's not intended for existing members. Uh, Somebody asks any oh, plans any plans to support third party unit management software? No, you, uh, units are all managed within LodgeMaster. There's no external integration. But uh, but people have asked again. It's not you're not required to use ScoutBook. So troops that use TroopMaster and other programs still feed their advancement information into Internet Advancement Two. It's now called. Um, so the OA integration will be available there. Is the the plan and hope. Um, well, we're about two minutes past, but we only have 14 questions left. So I think we should uh, hit these last few and then um, yeah. let everyone go. Uh, Somebody let's... asked if they pay for dues or register an event. I assume you mean in the member, member portal that mark that person dues paid and add them to the event. In the future, yes, it'll take care of that. Once we have all that functionality, you know, it will take care of marking paid where it needs to um, and, and registering for that event. Somebody had a question about people who have been ordeal members for more than six months. So I, I'm assuming they mean eligible for brotherhood. And that is, um, you can do that through the, me the member module now and build a, a search as you need. Um, another question, if scouts are elected multiple times, i.e. Uh, they're a member of a troop and a crew, how does LodgeMaster handle it? Right now, we don't check to see if it's the same person that's been entered between the two elections. So uh, multiple candidate records could get generated. Somebody asked, will information be overwritten from the council side? We have more current information than what ScoutNet provides. We don't push back uh, to the to Scout book, ScoutNet. So um, we're not gonna overwrite any information on the council side. Um. So somebody asked about the vigil journey as well. That's not something we currently have planned, but it's something we could certainly look at in the future though that's a much smaller and um, group to handle. Uh, somebody asked about chapter events. They do, they do them as service areas, two to three chapters. Uh, can we configure an in-between level for chapters and lodge? Yes, that's available in the structure and all of the induction stuff works at any of those levels. 
Somebody asks, we mentioned this earlier, but you we mentioned uh, payment integration to council accounts. Yes, the intent is that we'd work with uh, whatever the current council payment system is. That'll be authorized.net and um, I'm drawing a blank. Stripe. Stripe, think, Stripe, Stripe is what we're right currently now. planning on now. And we may look at PayPal. But so people have asked, we're not going to be integrating with the council website payment systems like Black Pug, Tentaru, Councilware, um, and Double Knot and things like that. So somebody asked again, we, I think we got quite a few questions on this, but uh, would Scoutbook overwrite LodgeMaster data? The Scout Book Sync is only for the candidates. When the unit leader pushes them over to LodgeMaster, that data is not in LodgeMaster yet. So you'll see whatever was sent from the council. You can then update it, but we're not going to overwrite it again. The sync doesn't run every hour or every day or anything. Um, whatever they push over is, is what comes over. And then if you make changes, that's what gets saved in LodgeMaster. Hopefully that's more clear. Uh, somebody had a question about being elected or not elected in multiple types of units, like a ship and a troop. Um, obviously, you'd most likely only be elected in one if they were already elected in a unit. Um, they wouldn't be elected in another one. But if they're not elected in one and elected in another, the system will work for them. Uh, if, let's see here. If a, me if a member... Uh, registers for an event, will it show what event they registered for in the member portal? Um, yes, uh, once we finish building out the uh, all the aspects of the member portal. But I believe, Michael, that's already, is that already in there? I'm sorry, I was reading a question. Can you? Oh, that's okay. No, um, for member registrations in the member portal, does it does it show which, I don't believe it shows yet which, which uh, events they're registered for. It does for candidates. It'll show what their okay. ordeal is that they're registered for. And as we build out more member functionality, that will certainly be in there. Down to three. Um, so uh, the top one there, Mike, that we haven't haven't hit yet uh, about uh, yes. youth, youth considered age to 21 with venturing and with troops and how Venturing participants are available in my dot scouting, but I don't know about scout book. Um, um, I'm not so, sure about so in weird instances like that, you'll always be able to type in manually candidates yeah. that aren't showing up for some reason. Oh, we were at three. We're back to six. Now we're at seven. Okay, so we I think to... <laughs> I, I again, because uh, ever yeah, the questions keep rolling in, and we're not able to stick around. We want to be respectful, and we've been going for over our ninety minutes. So. Uh, Questions are still coming in. If you have questions, please send them to support at lodgemaster.oa-bsa.org. Again, for the almost 200 of you that are still here, uh, thank you. We've, we've kept you longer and we, we appreciate you joining and uh, your support. With that, we are gonna end it. Um, so thank you again. Thanks everybody, have a great night.